Okay guys, when I left you last in part one, oh, we were going to do a speed run, and uh, I'll, I'll get back to that, but uh, you see the front deck is pretty pretty roomy. Um, they've got three buttons on the front deck. We've talked about this. Really, there's probably only a reason to have one up there, which is trim up and down, but they've got a courtesy light, trim up and down, and, a, uh, and the nav lights up there. And the one thing I'll point out is the trim button's on the top. I would think it should be on the right where it would be alone by itself so I can trim it when I'm fishing with my foot. But that would be a really simple fix. And by the way, so just of note here, uh, this is a, uh, well, let's, so let's go ahead and talk about the rod box. This is something that, that I, you know, I understand they're, they're trying to be different. Uh, I hate it. I mean, I, I just, I got to be honest. It's just the rod stands straight up. Every single rod stands straight up. It just seems like a great way to throw rods over the side. Uh, it's putting all the weight on a very small hinge at the front of that rod box. I've already had problems in my Ranger on the big box in the middle with probably three times that much hinge. It's got the latch lid uh, snaps, those little uh, hooked snaps that you know I'm not a fan of. Um, it's a great big roomy rod box. I'll give them credit for that. But, um, and uh, I just don't like it, guys. I mean, I, I don't understand why they did it that way other than just to be different. And it just seems to me a really bad idea to, to get a rod out. You've got to basically lift it most of the way up or hold it with one hand and lift it with the other. And uh, I'm, I, I just don't like it. Uh, so I'll, I'll quit on that. Uh, so as we're looking around the boat here, uh, I did do a speed run on the boat. So I ran it in the low 70s into the wind with the uh, ice chest, excuse me, with the uh, live well empty. And then I turned around and filled the live well and ran it back downwind and could only get the low 60s out of it. And I monkeyed with it and I monkeyed with it. And you're going to see, I finally went back and got Jerry, the boat owner, and brought him out with me. And we came out and you'll see the speed on the boat there. But you see it does have port and starboard rod boxes here. Um... There is carpet in those rod boxes, but one other point I'll make here. So this is a 2019, and this is the two, uh, the 215 boat, the F215. Uh, they do make a 21 TE, which is their tournament edition boat, and that's the boat I want to look at next because the Falcon reached out to me and said, "Hey, hey, we've tweaked these boats a lot. The two, the uh, 21 e, TE is a completely different uh, top cap setup." And if I'm going to buy a boat, that's probably the boat I would want to look at. So I know it does still have those side up front opening rod boxes, which I'm not a fan of. You see they've got a tackle management storage uh, system in the front of the boat here with the two small center boxes, which I've kind of become okay with as I've looked through these boats. Uh, but uh, carpet in the boxes on this boat, I don't know about in the other boats. Carpet in the floor on this boat. Uh, you see there one of their one of his uh, pistons had pulled off. I just popped it back on for him. Um, and there is sea deck available in the other boats, including the 21 TE. So uh, there's the ice chest we talked about in the first video where you see where the water can drain and come around in a rainstorm or if you take one over the front and go right into that box, that's, that's not a great setup for that. It is a big one. He said he can get two full bags of ice in there. Uh, there's some bad camera work, so let's jump to some more footage. Guys, this is another issue I saw with the boat uh, that I, we saw this same issue in the Charger boat. And by the way, in the Basscat Lynx boat, but but Basscat is addressed in another way, and you'll see that in the in the Lynx review next week. But when that trolling motor is in the stowed position, it's very low to the deck, and it's right in the deck, so it's not out over the over the gunnel, if you will. And it really eats up rod storage space in the stowed position. So I'm going to say to you, in the stowed position, you're going to struggle to get more than three or four rods on that port side. So if you're a guy who runs around with 15 or 20 rods on the front deck, you're going to have a little bit of challenge here. So just note that when you look at the boat. I've only really seen that issue in a couple of boats. Most manufacturers have either stowed it higher or stowed it more over the gunnel. But that's, that is a challenge in this particular model boat. I'll be curious to see the 2021 if it's in the same place. Because they have told me they've tweaked it. They've told me they've tweaked the dash some. So I'm looking forward to seeing the, the 2021 boat somewhere here in the next few weeks. Okay, so this is the 215. And if you go back and watch the beginning of the first video, you see I walk up and I touch the side of uh, Jerry's boat. 
And I did that because that falcon badging on the side of the boat is the same raised metallic stickers that Phoenix is using and that Vexus is using or similar. I don't know that it's the same maker. And his were scratched up because fork has timber in it. I am I'm not a fan of that. I, I would actually if I would order a boat if I ordered a boat without those stickers even on it and just stick them on there when I sold the boat because uh, I don't want to tear them off. But interestingly, so they're what they're now calling kind of their flagship boat, which is their newest boat to market, is the uh, Predator F-20. Now, it's a much smaller boat, and it's not a boat I'm interested in, but this is that boat. And and this is cool. So you see the Falcon that they've that on the side of that boat there. My understanding from talking to Falcon today or yesterday actually is that's in the glass. So that's not a raised sticker. That is a much, much, much better idea. And although you can't see it in this picture very well, above that, actually above the rub rail on the top cap is the actual Falcon badging. So I would hope they're going to go to this. I, I don't know what all is involved in doing that, but I would hope they're going to go to this particular style in all their boats. Personally, I think it looks better, uh, and it's uh, it's certainly going to be more durable. But again, I'm interested in the in the 21-foot boat, not a 20-foot boat. And, and interesting to me, by the way, you know, here we are at the beginning of the year and all the pros are doing their uh, their videos of their new boats. And it's really interesting to me. Most of these guys are running smaller boats now. They're wanting to go faster. It's become a bigger boat race. Now, granted, most of them don't. Most of the lakes these guys fish are not the size of Toledo and Rayburn uh, or Erie. So, uh, you know, if I fished in Arkansas, honestly, I would not be concerned with running a 21-foot boat. There's just not that much big water there. Uh, if I was a river fisherman, I would certainly fish a smaller, faster boat. This is the boat that most of these pros are running. But again, for where I fish and what I do, I want all the boat I can get, which is why I'm looking at 21 footers. Okay. So this was a head scratcher that I just had to reach out to Falcon and ask the, the seat folds up and there's nothing under it, but it's just the way these seats, uh, mounted. And I was told that the seats in the new boat are actually different seats anyway. So we'll review the seats in the 2021 now down here as well they've got two little slots for your co-angler i'm going to say if you've got those big bumps on the bottom of your rod you're going to be hard pressed to get six rods in that space which is pretty typical i mean they're, they're most boats are not set up for a co-angler to carry 15 rods uh, that's a very poor design if you can see i'm showing you the the old crap handle on the on the left hand for the uh, co-angler would actually be under their rod so i'm curious to see if they've changed that uh, there is one I'm going to show you when I'm running down the lake that I hold uh, in front of me there in a dual console. But in a single console, I think you're really going to have trouble for the uh, co-owner to have anything to hold on to there. There are a couple of center options available in this boat. Uh, and again, we'll talk more about those when we do the second review because it's going to have a different center box option. Uh, and I'm pointing out to you there that, that you can actually reach the uh, oh crap handle on the right side pretty well, and it's a nice roomy handle. I had gloves on. I could grip it real easy, but I, I really did not like the one on the left side there. That's the little center storage box, glove box right there. In this particular boat, the only USB plugs were external. They were not, and actually they were cigarette lighters, but um, they were external, not in boxes. Again, we'll, we'll confirm whether they've done that in the new boxes. Uh, nice roomy big boxes on the back deck. I uh, had no problem with those. Somebody did ask in the first video. You see there's some water there on the back deck. I did catch a little bit of backwash when I shut the boat down. You can see it's not terrible, but I did catch some backwash when I shut the boat down. Okay, just reviewing the splash well area. You know, we've seen some boats that are a little cleaner back there at hiding cables, uh, but it's not bad, it's, and it's a traditional splash well design. Uh, it does have a remote uh, drain plug you see right there. There's where you plug in to charge. And then it has the little sea deck padding back there on the back if a fellow had a reason to stand back there and lean against a power pole to do something. So uh, pretty standard. But again, we're going to look at the TE boat. So we'll look at the interior of that boat as well. Okay, so let's check out the stability. It feels like a real stable boat. We'll check it out anyway. Try not to get out of the boat. Got a little bit of wave action there. Let's say between one and one and a half degree. Start the side on the front. I 
about the same there. Now it's a dual console, so it seems like it's better weighted than some of the books we've looked at. And on the back deck, you guys can see the number I can't. Uh -oh, a little water in the hole. I will note the boat will backwash just a little bit. I noticed that when I shut it down. Bilge pump works. All right, so there we go. That's standing all the way on the starboard side. Go back to the port side. See what we got here. Now, as I'm thinking about it, it is one divided live well. I only see one fuel tank. It's a 50 gallon according to the website. Uh, the boat seems pretty well port, uh, pointed, I guess is the word I'm trying to come up with. Kill that camera. So okay guys, I alluded to this early on. So uh, I took the boat out, right at first rattle out of the box. Uh, live wells empty, not a ton of gas in the boat, but back into a little breeze. And I got the boat to touch low 70s, filled the live wells up down by the dam, turned around and ran back downwind, and the performance was just significantly less. I mean, it was in the low 60s. I couldn't even get into the mid 60s. So I called Jerry and I said, I, I want you to come run this boat. It's a fixed jack plate. I can't figure out why I can't get this boat to run faster. And I want to give every one of these boats a really fair shake when it comes to performance. So uh, Jerry, I went and got him, picked him up at the boat ramp, came back out, and you're going to see here, he ran this boat into the, let's say, maybe touching 67 miles an hour. Uh, and, and I would say a little bit less than tournament loaded because we weren't carrying much fuel in this boat. So I'm going to say this boat's ranger fast, maybe not even quite ranger fast. Um, I know a lot of the of the guys who are running sort of their team guys are running that predator the f20 it's a smaller boat i'm sure it's a faster boat but as we have all learned uh through this process there's there's two ways to make a boat go faster you make it lighter or you make it narrower narrower i can't say that word or both and this boat is neither it's a 1975 pound boat with a 99 inch beam i believe the biggest beam we've looked at and the performance off the boat reflects basically exactly that so um, there was and is and it appears to me like this is a pretty fairly priced boat maybe than some maybe less than some of the other boats we've looked at and there's been a tremendous amount of interest this the first video had well over 20,000 views really quick so I'm interested in looking at the TE boat and rather than grading this boat and, it, and it, by the way they're hard to find I'm not not had any real success uh, the guys from uh, uh, Bingham Marine down in Belton have reached out. Uh, they've got a TE in stock. Uh, we've, we've had a hard time connecting because, again, this is not my full dot job, time job. I can't just jump up and run to Belton and do this, and, and they're having a hard time getting up here. They, they're trying to be real accommodating, I, and, and, guys, I appreciate that. Uh, if, and, and then I've also spoken to the regional rep for Phoenix. Uh, he's supposed to be reaching out to Sarton. I've not heard back to see if they have one in stock. And if that doesn't work, uh, one of their pro staff guys, Danny Weems, has reached out to me. And he said his new one will be in here in the next two or three weeks. So, you know, I'm going to do basically the same thing I did with the Vexus, right? I want to give you guys a fair shake on this boat, and I want to give Falcon a fair shake, and I want to understand the boat. So I'm not going to get in a hurry to finish this and grade this boat. We're going to leave it up with what we've got so far. And when I can get in that TE boat, uh, I would love to, to take that boat for a ride too and maybe see if, there's, see if it's a faster boat than what I experienced in this one. But I was not impressed with the speed of this boat. But um, we'll, we'll get to it when we get to it. And when we do, we'll get part three posted up and we'll get the boat graded. So I hope you guys appreciate that I'm, I'm neither in a hurry to say yay or nay about the boat. I want to give everybody a fair shake on the boat. And uh, we'll get to it somewhere in the next few weeks. So next week, you guys will see uh, Bass Champs footage from the Rayburn Bass Champs tournament. Uh, Terry Hawkins and I will be down there this week fishing that. And uh, don't forget about the Spark Incentives. If you hadn't seen those, check out the video right there at the top of the page. It's a pretty spectacular deal. And then uh, I got the Bass Cat links done. And I'm real excited about going through the editing on that boat. So I'll have that video up or the first part of that video up next week. And uh, if you see me at Rayburn, please say hello. We'll see you guys uh, down there this weekend. Thanks, guys.